Right, so this is the anemone. I'm going to have a go at making one flower with 12 petals. The first thing we need to do is actually create the centre. So I have a single half cut 26 gauge wire, which I'm going to bend a hook in. At, sorry, not yes, a hook in at the end, just to give it a bit more of an end so that it will hold inside the centre nicely. And then we're going to take about a centimetre ball of paste. It doesn't have to be pre-coloured because we're going to cover it with this pollen. So I am going to, for the purposes of today, I'm going to glue, uh, attach the centre to the hooked wire using a candle. Um, it's better than just having a lighter burning probably a bit safer, but any means to light the candle and then um, warm up your paste. Get it into a fairly crack free ball, only because we don't want it to crumble. And then we're going to set fire to just the hook end and keep the hook in the flame until you start to see it glow white then red and very carefully then push the very hot hooked end into the center of the ball okay now we won't need the flame for anything else other than the centers so that can just then be blown out used so the um the semolina or ground rice is quite pale in colour and what I've done is added black petal dust, uh, given it a shake, popped it in a pot and then to attach the pollen to the ball I'm going to glue the whole ball So make sure you go all the way around because you only really have a ch chance to dip this once. Okay. Just make sure the whole thing's covered. And then you can start to roll it in your pollen. And we'll let this dry a little bit. And later on, when we come to do all the petal dusting, we will probably add a little bit of green dust, just pure dust rather than pollen, maybe a touch of yellow, perhaps a touch of um, any other colour that you fancy, depending on which one you're making. But just make sure that you do go all the way around and pick up as much pollen as possible at this stage. Give it a little tap on the side and then that will reveal a really beautifully covered centre for the anemone. So the paste that I'm going to use, I've, I've got about 15 grams, three centimetre diameter ball. That will do all 12 petals. We'll probably have some left. And I'm just going to open that up and put the smallest amount. It really is just a hint. Honestly, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny dot of colour in there because the, you want to go with the palest shade of whatever you're choosing. And then we can mix that in. So really on camera, it's not going to show. So for the anemone flower, it's got about 12 or more petals. You can do less. Um, so depending on the variety that you're interested in uh, using for inspiration, my cutter is about two and a half centimetres wide, um, about three and a half centimetres long, but it doesn't matter if yours is narrow or fatter. You just use the same petal cutter all the way through. So it's not like roses where you make small petals for the centre and largest ones for the outside. And if you've got a fat petal, then we're going to elongate this anyway, just to make the petals a little bit um, longer looking. So I'm going to use 28 gauge wire to put into um, the paste once I've rolled it out. And I've got my paste here. I've kept it nice and warm by just putting it under my thigh, just so it is pliable. But I'm only going to pull out probably about a centimetre and a half ball of paste, just so that I've got just enough to make one, or if you've got a thick enough ridge, possibly two out of the same piece. Because if you roll a big piece of paste, 
you're just going to end up drying it out or adding too much corn flour to it. So as a ball, I'm just going to roll it into a slight party sausage shape, which gives me some or most of the width and then start at the bottom end of the board where it's really got a nice wide ridge ready to insert the wire. And then um, roll further so that you know you've definitely got your width and then you can roll up. Okay, now if you think it's going to stick, we've got very humid, very humid sticky day today. Uh, definitely put corn flour on the board and some on the top if you need to. And that's another reason not to roll out too much paste in one go, because it, it just upsets the balance of the paste if you put too much corn flour in there. Okay, so just I want to give that another roll just so it's nice and thin. But as you can see, I have got trouble with that today. Um, if you find that corn flour is simply not working for you as a non-stick uh, method of Yes, it's, you can use um, Trex, so white fat, um, and you can put that onto the board and the rolling pin to stop it from sticking. The only thing with that is you'll find the, um, the Trex acts as a, a, a greasy barrier to any colour that you might want to apply. So it will impact on how your colouring goes onto the petals. I try and avoid it at all costs. I also try and avoid putting any hand cream on my hands before I work as well. So peeling off and turning the ridge over so you can see it clearly, and then you can line your petal shape up. Give it a good old press and then rub around the outside edge before you remove. Now I've got this is super thin, really, really nice and thin so that once we've popped it in the veiner, it's even thinner and it's a very fine petal tissue like and then I can pop that under my piece of plastic so if you've got a little wallet a plastic wallet a full plastic wallet and you can use that or anything just to stop it from drying out or you might be working with each petal um, straight away in which case you don't need to put it under cover so this one I'm going to keep out I had enough paste there to be able to cut a second one. The trick is though to make sure that when you're cutting your second one you have still got a thick ridge that you can insert your wire through. So I'm going to take my 28 gauge wire and applying a little bit of pinching pressure between my finger and thumb and I'm left-handed so I hold it in my right hand. You might want to do that the other way if you're right-handed. So insert the wire and then try and keep it in the middle of the ridge and apply a bit of pinching pressure top and bottom as you push that through. And then once you've got it to about two mil from the top edge, so it's really quite close to here, I'm actually going to stretch the petal downwards. So we've got more of a paddle shape than a fat petal. So it just narrows it slightly, okay? It's just because the anemone petals are a bit more elongated than the um, cutters. And then with a little bit of corn flour, and you can see I've got quite a lot on here from previous uh, makings of this flour. As you look at the poppy veiner, you've got a PP, which stands for poppy. If that's reading PP rather than upside down as a D, your ridge on your flour is gonna go face down onto if I put that the left side, so PP onto this side. So ridge face down and come right in the middle where all the texture is, we want that texture. Leaving a gap here so it comes up just a fraction. And then we're gonna press nice and firm without wiggling the hand. That way you'll get the texture but you won't distort your wire. And then we can release the petal carefully. Hopefully it hasn't stuck. And you can see I've got a really nice bit of lined texture on there. So after that, you want to thin the petal edges. So we're just going to transfer it onto the foam pad. I've got a bit of fluff in there, so I'm just pulling that off. And use my big end of my bone modeling tool. A Little bit of corn flour again 
if you think it's going to stick. So of course, I'm feeling like it's very sticky this morning. And I'm going to run just by placing the tool half on the paste, half off the paste. I'm going to run the tool around the outside edge. Now, the anemone petals are not overly frilly. OK, so we've got a bit of texture in there, but not a huge amount. It's more about how you bend the wire now. So what we're going to do, let's just bring that onto a different background, is bend, put your finger and thumb. This is the front. This was where the ridge was, so that's the back. Curl by using your finger and thumb. Curl the petal towards the front. And then with your finger and thumb, run gently either side of the wire so that it cups it slightly in the middle and use your finger and thumb to gently curl the outer edge a bit backwards. So there's like three movements there. Be careful here, just close that up a little bit, but not by much because we need to be able to fit this underneath the center that we're making. Okay, so we curl towards, we stroke the back, so it curls inwards like a spoon, a cup shape, and then you use your finger and thumb just to gently curl the outside petals. Okay, so three, three little shaping bits, a bit more technical than some of the other flowers we're making. All right. And we're going to make 12 of those. So just to show you the petal again, apply a bit of pinching pressure between your finger and thumb. That helps guide the wire into the middle of the ridge. You've got that thick bit in the center and you want to take full advantage of that. Put it, the wire in so that it's about two millimeter from the end. And then once your wire's in as far as you want it to be, just take hold of the middle and then just gently pull the bottom end so that you're elongated, that your petal's elongated, okay? I've got a little bit of black in there, so I'm just gonna take it out. Now, the other thing as well is if you're finding that when you make your petals that the wire is showing through at the end, You'll notice that when you put it together, you'll see that there's just like a little wire end all the way around. You can go down in wire size. So you could make these on 33 gauge wire if you wanted to. Uh, it makes them super fine. The 33 gauge wire is a little bit harder to push through because it's very bendy. But if you want a lighter, um, more natural look or you're just annoyed with how the 28 gauge wires are going in that might be an, an option so we're just come flat up the vena press nice and hard to get the texture and then you've got to be on your foam pad for the next bit so if the ridge this is the back this is the ridge side you can see that because the the veins are actually more raised on that side so that's the back they're more inverted on the front and then just pinch the edge all the way around not pressing too hard because it's already very thin the movement is finger front and back curl towards you. So I never curl where the wire end is because that can bring the wire through. So the curve is in here. Then just draw your finger and thumb down the back, just either side of the wire. That gives you a cupping effect. So further curls in the petal. And then right on the very edge, we just use our fingers To curve it out. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be fully curved out all the way around, just make sure you've got that nice cupped look in the centre. And then something like this you might find to hold its shape, especially if it's quite a damp day, to actually bend the wire back on itself like so. 
and then you can push this side down into your oasis or piece of polystyrene or balance it against the edge of a cup, something like this, just so that it can dry in its shape. So we need to make 12 of these petals. So we've made our petals and they're drying and we've made this center, but now we want to put the stamens around the center. And there's two ways of doing it. We can just use just simply stamens, seed head black stamens, or if you're making a, a pale version of the anemone, perhaps white, some of them have white stamens. Um, or you can have a combination. So this one is cotton and stamen. So I'm going to show you both just so you can see uh, the differences. And then depending on what you've got or what you like, you can um, use either technique. So we've got a little bit of uh, tape. This is just the Nile green tape. I'm going to stretch it so that it's ready. Stretching releases the glue, makes it tacky, and then it sticks to itself. And my bundle of stamens, you're probably going to use about a third. So this, this is about two thirds of a pack of stamens. So I can take half of those. So take a third out of your full bundle. And we can wire up, just keep the wire around the bit you're not using because it's easily tangled. And I've got some 28 gauge wires here. And what we want to do is create maybe six bundles that are then going to be positioned around the center you've already made. So the way I do that is to count out perhaps six stamens, which are double headed. So I've got six in my hand. And just level those off, fold them in half. So you've then got 12 heads with a loop in the fold. Take the 28 gauge wire, thread all that through. You can do it to halfway, it's fine. It doesn't matter how far you push, pull it through, just as long as you can then hold on to the, the loop end of your stamens and twist the wire tight like a sandwich tag. OK, so now you've got all the stamens on your wire. Now, while they're on there, keep them all scooched back tight and take your tape and rest the tape halfway on the wire and halfway on the loop of stamens. It's important that you have got some of the stamens wrapped up in this tape so that it doesn't open up. I'm actually going to change what I'm doing here because with the anemone, the stamen length here is not as long. So this will lock it in. I'm going to tape to about here. Okay, so initially you just, well, you know, I'm actually going to, you know when the voice in your head tells you stop, rethink, and change your mind. You can do it like this, but it's for longer stamens. So I'm actually going to change your mind. I'm going to put a 28 gauge wire. Without going through the loop, I'm going to rest it on those folded because if I, if I don't, then I've got no strength where I want them to tape in. So it's better that the wire is up where you want to start your taping. Sorry for the confusion there. Um, so I'm going to overlap my tape where my little 28 gauge wire is and I'll measure that for you so you can see but try and keep all the stamens fairly level and tape a little way down the stem as well it just will help um, stop the stamens from moving now I've got a couple of low ones so I can just take hold of those and just use my fingers just to help pull those out most of them are one centimeter. Okay, so once you tape, so the 28 gauge wire has gone up to here, tape down and then a little way, probably the same length again on the wire. Take hold of the stamens where you've started the taping. 
use your thumbnail to help you bend the stamens backwards on themselves 90 degrees and then just support here while you use your finger and thumb to curl them upwards and spread them out so you've got this curve so it's bent back here but it's curved and then spread out and you can see what I'm trying to do if I show you on the center I've made this is going to sit quite tight to the base of the center you've made and you can see that the stamens are showing the side but they're not too long okay so I'll just redem that and then I'll move on to the one with cotton so I'll just redem because I feel like I've confused you a little bit so three maybe six stamens they're double headed so when you fold them you end up with 12 heads try and keep them all fairly level fold the loop we don't need the loop in this instance if I wanted to create stamens that were longer I could do it the way I showed you initially but lay the wire at about a centimeter from the top take your tape and overlap and start the taping where you've started your wire pinch really tight it's quite tricky to do this because they can fall and then tape the whole of this area here you hit the wire and then tape the same distance again use your thumbnail to give you a guide hold on tight to the taped end bend it back 90 degrees and then again, holding the stem, you can use your thumb and finger to curve and fan out. Now, if I'm looking at the center here, if I put this one in and then add another beside, you can see that we're starting to fill the area. So I probably want one, two, three, four, five, possibly six. Okay. So the other way to do the stamens is where you might want to just use cotton and a few of the seed head stamens. That's a more economical way of doing it. Um, or perhaps you can't get hold of the stamens at all. And then you know that that's, this is the way you can uh, do it. So I've just got normal cotton, just polyester cotton or cotton cotton, it doesn't matter. This is just an off-white shade. And um, I'm going to put my two fingers together with a little bit of a gap in the middle just so that I don't, that I can peel the cotton off in a minute. And you start by wrapping round both fingers probably about 15 times. If you notice I've got my cotton in a pot, just stops it from flying around. Okay, it's probably about 20 times. And then I can take my scissors and cut. The cotton can come out of the way and you release the cotton off your finger to show a big loop. Now that's too big for the moment. So what we need to do is twist it in the middle. So I take hold of both ends of the loop, turn it so that the center crosses over itself and you've got like a figure of eight. And then you fold one loop over the other. Okay, you have to try and keep hold of this because it does all knot up if you accidentally let go. So now we've got a smaller loop, but it's double the thickness. And that was with 20 turns around my finger. Then you go through the center with your wire to halfway, close it over and twist like a sandwich tag. quite tight. You don't have to go all the way down the stem. You just need to make sure that this part here is fairly tight. Take your scissors, put the blade through the center and give the whole of the loop now a tug so that you've got the same size all the way along. Scooch the cotton out of the way and tape half on the cotton, half on the wire. And that's so that when we trim through the cotton, 
it doesn't open up. So I like to start by just helping it a little bit, fold it over the base of the cotton it's by about three, four millimeters. Pinching tight as you do, and then you can come a little bit down the wire. You don't need to go all the way down. So you can see on here that I've got some of that tape on the cotton end. Then you can hold on to here and open up all the loops. So you can try and do that in one go. So just get your blade right in there, pull up a little bit, support the bottom while you do it, and then you can cut to open. If you run the blade through a few times, then you can check that you have actually opened up all the loops. And then you want to give it a little bit of a haircut because for this, we want the stamens to only be just over a centimetre. So I'm going to trim it about here. You can always use a ruler to measure this. So I'm just pressing flat, running my thumb up to the area where I want to cut, positioning my thumbnail in that area, and then we give it a fringe trim. Okay, so a nice sharp pair of scissors will work for this. Needlework scissors will be fine. And if you tr take your trimmings, catch them in something because they can go everywhere. Okay, so now we've got a good trim there. Might just trim a little bit more on this side. So now we can add in maybe two heads of stamen. It means you're over taping a little bit, but it does mean you get just the odd black stamen showing in your center. So I'm just going to take, I haven't cut them in half just yet. I'm just going to take two of those, position them roughly the same height as the cotton. Come back to the area where I started taping in the first place and secure those. It's a bit fiddly. Now I don't need to tape too far down. What I want to do is save these two for another cotton stamen. So we're just going to snip them off. So I've got two further lengths to, to use later on. And you can continue taping down. Then as before, take hold here, bend back, and curl towards you. And these in a minute, we're going to glue the tips and get a little bit of the black pollen that we used for the center to go on. So there's more work involved, but certainly it's a possibility if you haven't got the stamens or you don't want to use so many. I think I might, once I've found that out, actually, I might just show you um, how to get the pollen on. But if I hold this against here, you can see as well that that's gonna work and we possibly only need maybe three or four of those. And that was 20 turns of the um, cotton. So if I get my black pollen that I had before, I'll pop it in a pot this time because it did go everywhere before. Glue the tip ends that you want to have some pollen on. And a bit like the centre, you need to be fussy with this because you only really get one dip. The reason for that is because you don't want to con contaminate your glue brush. Um, if you have to double dip, then you need to put more glue on and that might pick up some of the pollen or the black colour and that will transfer into your glue. So now I'm just going to dip in to my pollen, just the tip ends. And you can see that's dirtied it up enough 
to give it some interest. That you'd need to let dry for about 20 minutes or so before you could actually put it around the center. So that's how you make it using cotton and just a few stamens. So once you've made all your um, stamen pieces, you're ready to put this around the ball that you've already made. So we're just gonna position it right tight. Okay, it's quite tight. But when we're taping, I don't wanna keep twisting tape round right at the top here because it's already gonna be thick. Now anemone stems are thick anyway, so you don't have to worry too much. But I'm gonna start the taping down here and just flip over so that I've got a bit of hands free. You should find that the stickiness from the tape that's stretched around the stamen will help it attach to the stem. But don't worry if these ping off, just each time you add one, tape a little bit down here. Just keep putting them in. Again, if they move, you can always reposition. So just remember it's this part here where this tape, tape has started goes tight to the base of the ball and just work your way around. Just push it into the stem a little bit so you can see that it's in the right place, but don't worry if it flicks out. So that's four. Fifth one. Just roughly position, just checking that this is level with the base of the ball. And then I think we will need a sixth one. So find the gap that that wants to go into and tape again, okay. Now, I would suggest at this point, you break off the tape, press all of your stamens around and because the tape is sticky, it should help it close up. And then come back to your tape, just keep, make sure it's not folded and line this up at the top here. Just press on in one place and then neatly tape all of those together and then start to come down. Okay, so it is quite thick, but that won't show once you put your petals on. Your stem, once all the petals are on, the only bit you're really gonna see is, is this bit down here. Okay, you don't have to come down too far because we've got all the rest of the petals to go on in a moment. So then we can just pull these away. Okay, now you've got your center for your anemone. Okay, so for coloring of these petals, you've got a whole selection of flowers you can choose from, from white, just toned with a bit of pink or green, purple. Um, this one here is um, a deep purple color. If you use the plum, which is in, in this range, the spectral paste, petal dust colors, um, and the cornflower blue, you can make yourself a deep purple or a more pinky purple. So I've got a shade, we've got fuchsia pink, plum, deep purple, African violet, these two I'm going to take out. I've just put a little bit of African violet in here and I've got my pinks here. So a combination of colours, just play around with it, but then everything would be the same on that flower. I like to have a bit of tissue to work on as well, just so I can draw the colours onto it and um, blend them in. So African violet, we've got a bit of plum, a bit of pink. If not, if you've got cornflower blue, just add that to it and you'll get a similar shade. So just working the color into the brush and then you want to support the petal while you're dusting just on the back here. And depending on what you're going to do, if you just want a hint of the shade and it's gonna be at the base, then you start at the bottom and you work your way up. And you can do a little bit on the back as well, but most of the colors on the front. If you want something, so that's how I've done this one here with just a hint of the color in the center. If you want something a bit stronger, then you can start to color, but 
miss certain areas. So for example, on this petal here, I've got an edge of white. So having worked the brush, worked the color onto the brush to make sure I haven't got too much loose, I can control where that coloring's going. So I can give myself an edge that's almost white. Of course, some of the color is gonna go on that edge but not as much as if you were actually brushing from the edge with the brush, okay? So then we can keep coming back here, avoiding the area. So just in and down, drawing the color to where you want it to be. So I'm gonna just continue drawing the brush down to about the middle and then stop. But I'm not gonna start in the middle and color up. So I can do an edge of white all the way around if I want to or in places uh, it may want to have colour from the edge. So in which case you want to use the brush to draw the colour in from the outside edge inward and down. And you just avoid colouring the bottom here and maybe you avoid colouring a bit of the edge. It's best to have a look at a real flower. Keep referring to one you like and then you can, you know, you've got a guide really then. So we're just working in, drawing down. So I'm not gonna to put too much color on here, just mostly on the top, having left that outside edge uncolored. And this part here is gonna be white. Okay, so it's just to give me a bit of difference between the three flowers. And if you want to, you can do a little bit on the back. And you want to color all 12 petals, and then I'll show you how to put together. So on the anemone, although it's not necessary, you could actually put in the bright. Um, but using sugar, this is very breakable because you've only got a wire that can go up the central centre here. You could spur off some wires, but it's not going to be enough to support it and it becomes very breakable, which is annoying. So uh, what I've got here is some wafer paper and I want to show you how you make a leaf using wafer paper. And this is a method that can be applied to all different types of leaves and possibly petals. It's something to maybe explore um, another time. So I've got just a piece of the white wafer paper. You can buy green, but interestingly, I have some green in my stock and I went to it yesterday and it's turned blue. It loses its color. So it's probably better to um, buy white and color. So I'm just gonna snip that. So we've got a piece that's big enough to work with. I'll just give you a bit of a measurement. It's um, about nine centimeters by six, six and a half, something like that. And we're gonna fold that in half like a book. Now I've got, I've got the shiny side. It doesn't really matter because it sticks to itself, but if we put the shiny side inside, Okay, fold that over. Just so you've got a crease. And then we can color this a little bit with green. So I've got just moss green petal dust here. Brush that over just to take a bit of the color. It doesn't have to be too particular because you can dust the outsides as well but it just gives it a color that might come through a little bit. Then take your 28 gauge that I've cut into th thirds and we're ready to wet the other side. So you can use glue or water, something that's quite runny Okay, so water will be fine. So glue the wafer paper. As soon as it gets wet, it starts to curl. Take your wire 
and position that into the middle of the green coloured end. And then close up and press on. So that closes up. OK, so it's already stuck. Moisture is great for this. So I've got a strip of paper sandwiched or well, a piece of wire sandwiched between two sheets of paper. Then we can go back and brush the colour on. Now, because we've got the shiny side on the inside and the rough side on the outside, the rough side takes the colour better. Now, you can colour after you've cut your shape, but I find it easier to do this way. So we've got a bit of green on both sides and we can touch that up once we've created our piece. And now we use a bit of artistic license and start to cut out our shape. So the, the shape of the Barat for, it's a bit weird. I think, again, it's one of those things that perhaps you need to have a look at and copy. It's got that little frond sticking out some are longer and others then are shorter. So we can cut this to here, but then come in to cut in additional piece on there. But you just want something that's a little bit spiky looking. And we continue that on the other side. So I'm just going to cut in, cut round, not all the way down to the stem, stop your cut and then come in and take that piece out. Cut a little bit more. Come in, stop short of the stem, trim that bit off. It's a bit hit and miss, really. It's not, um, I'm not following any. Just want something that looks a little bit like this. And then when you're ready to come to the stem, if you cut it, you can turn this over as well to cut if it's easier. Kind of cut it, I'll show you what I mean. It's cut to a point which we can then pull off. Okay, so really weird shape. Now, I don't want to wet this at this point because it's going to cause me a, a bit of a mess and it could pull the colour off. So what I am going to do is actually steam it. So you can use a kettle. I'm just going to change camera angle. So I've got my, this is my um, PME steamer. but you could waft over a kettle as well. So I'm just going to have that on. I'm just going to put that on. Watch out that you don't have your flowers right in the way because that's going to steam them as well. So we're going to put this on, let that steam and wet this and immediately we will be able to shape it, okay? And what I found is that when you wet this, it will curl towards the bit, that, the side that's wetted. steamer itself takes a, a very quick few moments, just a few moments to boil. Um, with the kettle, you need to wait until it's boiled and steaming. Obviously, the steamer stays on. So here I'm just wafting. OK, so it's getting a little bit wet. Come off there. This one tends to spit as it switches off for some reason. And immediately you can shape this. If I leave it too long, I have to re-steam it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's already dried. Let's do this again. So I'm just going to steam it. You can see it go, and straight away you can bend it. So use your 
fingers to curve down. You can steam a little bit more to get this more curly. You could even push it through veiners if you wanted to, to get texture, but we don't need to on this. Okay, so now I have my little bract. And that within moments is gonna be dry enough to dust over if we want to. And it will be firm again within about two, three minutes. So it's really fast. And there's a lot of um, people doing wafer paper flowers and leaves now. And the most confusing bit is how do you get the wire in there and how do you texture? But you can texture using moisture. The steam I've found personally for me is better than water. If you steam your shape and then put it through a veiner and press, you will get those markings on your paper. Okay, so that's dry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just show you how to put the flower together. We've got our prepared center and some tape, same half width tape as before. Now, um, the best thing to do to start with is to clamp each petal right at the base where the wire inserts to the sugar flower paste and push back on both the wire and the petal. So my finger goes on here, my thumb goes on here and I push. So what we end up with is a 90 degree angle that's really tight to the petal. And to prepare, it's probably better if you do that to all of them and then you haven't got to pick up the tweezers in between each petal being attached. That's gonna be a bit of a pain for you if you have to keep putting things down. So they're all bent back on themselves. It's just so that we've got them aligned in the right way. And then the idea is to take each petal, I haven't wired, taped them. Each petal is gonna sit directly behind and tight to the stem. If you do end up with larger and smaller petals, you could concentrate the larger ones around the outside and just pick the smallest ones first but ideally all of them want to be the same size. So again, like we did with the stamens, I'm actually starting down the bottom here. I just need to line up my petals, get the first five in. So nice and tight underneath. Has anyone else lost volume? So just continue each time you add a petal, just twist the tape around so that it takes hold of the wire. So I'll just put three on so you can see. That's the start of it there. Okay, I didn't mean to rip the tape off. It's better to keep the tape on there for the time being. Then you can get petals number four and five. If you feel brave, you can put more than one petal on, but because they're all spread out, it's quite possible that your tape won't be touching both petals that you add at the same time. So I find individuals better. So we've got them all nice, tuckly tight, tightly tucked. And then, but our taping is down here for the time being, okay? So you can just bring those up a little bit. You can see you can make a small one just with five petals. So now we've got those fairly well lined around. And of course, we don't want to fiddle with them too much because they're still a bit on the wet side. We can start to position the remaining petals. Now, they still want to go as high up as you can. So if they feel like they're going to slot in, then that's fine. But it's all right if they go in behind. OK, so just line up behind. I'm running out of tape, so I'll just get another piece. And I can start higher up, just vary where you're taping so that you don't get a thick bit on your stem. Okay, they are going to move around, but just keep adding.
until you feel like the flower has got enough petals or till you run out. So I think I'm going to end up with 11 on here. You can look um, every now and again to see if you're putting them in the right position, just so that there's an even spread of petals all around. So once you're happy that you've got them all in and none of them have dropped down, so they need to be really tight up there, pretty much at the same height, um, you can reverse the direction that you're taping in and tape upwards. Normally you tape angled down. Just give the tape a good stretch and use your finger to guide where you're going to place it. Don't worry too much if some of the petals have moved out of position because you will be able to, once you've taped, you'll be able to just adjust them a little bit. But when you do do that, be gentle so you don't tear them off the wires. So I just need to add a bit more tape in here. You just don't, you want to get the tape up as high as you can so that as best you can, you can't see the wires. Okay, and then you can change directions quite sharply and start to tape down the stem to about here. This is the point where I'll bend this backwards on itself. You probably have one or maybe two bracts per flower. So there's a good inch and a half gap before you put the bract in. And continue the taping all the way down the flower probably till where it starts to thin out. I would only ever chop this once I know how it's going into an arrangement because you don't want to have to elongate the wire again. So you can go all the way down. And once you've gone all the way down, you can actually just use something smooth to rub out any of or some of the um, wraparound lines. Now looking at the top now, I actually don't want to do too much to that because I quite like the fact that it's a little bit uneven in places and a little bit open. So to be honest, probably just tweak a couple of the petals, but that is probably enough. Okay, there's a little bit of tape showing here. I could have been a bit fussier with that. You could, of course, add a bit of colour in here just at the base in the same colour you've coloured the petal, but lightly, and that will colour up these um, wires that are showing. Or you could use a little bit of moss green, lemon yellow mixed to put a bit of green on there as well. So you just want to finish the stem. It's already thick enough. Sometimes we use pipe cleaners to thicken. But just make sure that the stem is nice and straight. You don't want too many wires spiraling around themselves because that can um, look a bit messy under the taping. And probably something like this. I would, when I've come down to just a single wire, that's the point where I would probably use my wire cutters to trim. And you can just, once you've trimmed, put a little tab of tape under there so you can't see the wires and break that off. The anemones have a bit of a bend to them as well. So just a subtle kind of S bend. Again, something smooth will take some of the taping marks out for you. And you can see that um, a selection of those would look really quite pretty. Okay, so those can be taped together and displayed, laid on a cake or in a stand or in a pick. And they look absolutely beautiful. So I hope you've enjoyed making the anemone today. Um, if you'd like the full kit list, or any more information or have any questions, then you can uh, contact me through my website, which is Inspire Creations. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.
Bye-bye for now.